Hey there! It's time to have a quick recap of the 2017 Washington DC Fountain Pen Super Show. Now, if you've been uh, following my, my channel for a while then you may know that I have been there before, but if you didn't, I was the last time I attended the DC show was 2012, so that's five years ago now. So it was kind of fun to be there five years later, sort of like a special uh, jubilee type of period of time that passed. So I thought what I was going to do today is just kind of talk through what happened at the show. Um, I met a lot of nice people to begin with and I cannot mention everyone um, just because that would take too long. So if I don't specifically mention you, it's no ill will, it's just a lot of people. So. I'm going to cover what will happen. Uh, if you are completely new to pens or you've never heard of a pen show, pen show is quite simply an event where a lot of vendors get together, usually mostly vintage vendors, so sellers of vintage pens, but also modern vendors, uh, people who sell modern pens, either really professionally, like say Anderson pens, uh, or uh, people who just do it as a hobby, and it's, it's always a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun because you get to meet like-minded people, you get to look at a lot of pens, and especially at a big show like this, this is known to be the, the biggest pen show in the world. Uh, you're not talking about dozens of pens, you're not talking about hundreds of pens, I'm pretty sure you're talking about thousands of pens, because it's a lot, a lot of people and a lot of pens. Okay, so, five years ago I was there last. For years and years it's been in the same venue, uh, a nice Sheraton Hotel, and this year they changed venues to Marriott, uh, also a hotel. Uh, it was an interesting venue. I have to admit I preferred the old venue a little bit, but what can you do? Um, so a nice Marriott in a nice area. There was some nice uh, sort of trees and green around, it. so it was, it was a, a pretty uh, a pleasant place to stay. It's a four-day show. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, what happened was we uh, as I am now, for the time being, based in the, the Toronto area, we, we were able to drive out. So Aziza went, her brother and his wife went, and his brother, I must, her brother, I must say, is a, a trooper, because he, he drove throughout the night. We had a, a few short breaks, but that was some serious driving. And in all, it took us about nine hours, including breaks. So it was a, it was a for a European, trust me, that's a long drive. I understand that for Americans that may be pretty normal, but for us that's, that's a long drive. In Europe, you're, you're, you're three countries over that amount of time. So, uh, But it was very interesting. It was a, a long drive. We, um, we definitely spent some time at the border. That was not necessarily very pleasant, but uh, uh, we, we managed. And uh, we arrived at 5 a.m. We'd left at about 7 p.m. from Toronto. We arrived at 5 a.m., same time zone, right? So that's, that's easy. Uh, 5 a.m., very early in the morning, we check in and uh, I, I sort of look over my shoulder, the sliding doors of the hotel open and the first person to walk in is Sarge Minas, the one-man pen show of, I would almost say infamous fame because that's exactly what it is. Sarge is a wonderful man, he is not a professional vendor, he doesn't have a website but he is the one-man pen show and he brings hundreds of pens to a show like this. They're all in perfect condition, they all have interesting nibs, uh, and he's a, he's a great guy. So Sarge and his wife Jazz are always a, a pleasure to, to hang out with. And that's also the person I typically kind of push people towards when they ask me who to, to check out first at a pen show. Because he basically has everything and if he doesn't have it then you probably don't want it. So it was great to meet him, 5am, he was on British time because he, he flies in from the UK and we had a quick chat, 5am very peculiar, I mean, he was exhausted, we were exhausted, and the show hadn't even started yet. So, that was a lot of fun. So, uh, we did that, we pretty much, because the show started uh, nine the next day, so we had a few hours of sleep, I have to admit, I, I didn't really sleep, I just kind of was lying in bed like this, I don't know, it was the boy-like excitement, but in any case, I, I uh, the first day was a little tough because of that. So, we slip into uh, Thursday, Thursday is sort of it's a trader day, so typically you buy a, a ticket for either Saturday or Sunday, but there is a trader pass that allows you to get in on Thursday and Friday as well. I think it's $45 or something. Um, and the first day, the trader day, to be honest, is pretty slow going. Uh, not nearly everyone is set up. I think about, 
half of the ballroom was was filled the other tables were empty uh, but a bunch of people are already in Sarge is already in uh, which alone you know <laughs> makes it worth going in so we checked out some stuff and I, I uh, actually made my my first purchase of the pen show and actually one of my uh, my, my very few purchases of the pen show um, this interesting item uh, from Dale Dale operates pentooling.com and if you are a pen restorer you like vintage stuff you like uh, those kinds of things Dale is always he's, he's a super super nice guy and uh, he sold me this uh, which uh, looks uh, rather uh, interesting like some sort of torture device but it is a nib removal tool so if you have Visconti uh, you have a, a nib collar which has two little slots you put this in and then you can rotate it very very carefully because they use very soft plastic that, that, that tears easily but in principle you can do that and you can um, remove nib so the first purchase All right. Um, I enjoyed that he was already set up, I enjoyed that some people were already set up because as I said not everyone is there on Thursday and I really wanted to, to get a tool like that because Visconti makes tools, there are Visconti tools but they're very very hard to get, they're only supplied to retailers, they only get one, it's, it's very hard so if you like to exchange nibs in principle they are friction fit but it's nice if you have the tool but as I said use it very very carefully because that plastic is, is soft. Okay well then at the end of the day um, uh, we were um, I think we were standing at um, uh, uh, Sarge's table and I saw Dan Smith, also known as the Nib Smith, uh, Nib Meister, and um, uh, Dan and I have known each other for a pretty long time because Dan was one of the, the two people who founded Fountain Pen Geeks. Um, and we were on uh, podcasts together every week for quite a long while, uh, you know, un until that sort of phased out. Um, but I'd never met Dan face to face five years ago. He wasn't in DC, so it it, it was a lot of fun to to meet him, say hi to him, because it's a very interesting experience when you know a person online but you've never been in the same room. So it's it's that that was great. It was I, I really enjoyed saying hi to him and um, you know finally seeing him. Uh, that that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Now as we were standing at Sarge's table at the end of the day, suddenly there was this sort of loud roar uh, that was heard throughout the hotel I think that was Lisa Anderson who uh, spotted us, Lisa Anderson of Anderson Pens because Lisa and Brian had uh, arrived uh, them I had met five years ago, they are super nice people I, I, I really love both of them dearly and it was it was great to, to catch up uh, with them and uh, just say hi and, and you know uh, you can chat online as much as you like, but sometimes it's really nice to just give people a hug. So that was great. We uh, uh, we uh, we sort of uh, uh, went our way, uh, and uh, we had dinner with them, just Aziz and me and, um, and the Andersons, and it was it was great fun. A lot of really nice uh, chat, banter, pen stuff, non-pen stuff. A lot of fun. So one of the themes throughout this video is going to be social interaction all right don't think you just go to a pen show to buy pens or look at pens you may not even be able to afford but that are that are right there it's also about meeting people talking to people saying hi and that's a lot of fun so um, that was I think uh, the Thursday we um, uh, went to bed early and exhausted driving throughout the night, Wednesday night, arriving early Thursday night and then walking the show floor uh, that was that was something. So Friday we start, you see me looking down because I made some notes because otherwise I forget half of, oops, half of what I talk about have to talk about so I got it. Um, Friday was the first official day. I'm thinking still a trader day because you need a trader pass to get in but the the many of the quote unquote bigger guys like Anderson Pens they were not there on Thursday they would set up on Friday and more people uh, uh, would would uh, so Thursday is very much focused on vintage and on Friday that balance shifts a bit and you get more modern pens in and complete and utter chaos erupted I uh, I'm sure other people will address this too but um, 
there was a lot of trouble for the vendors to get into the actual ballroom to set up. Uh, I, I, I don't want to focus on the negative, but that was definitely a, an issue. A lot of issue getting in. Um, the organization could be improved. That's all I want to say about that. But th that was that was quite unpleasant. It was great fun though, because we when we finally got in, uh, Aziz and I had uh, uh, I don't know if we offered or if the or if the Andersons asked, but in any case, we were going to help them set up. I've I've never set up at a pen show. The Andersons, I think they have five tables or something with a blue tablecloth. Everything needs to be set up. You just get your tables and and you have to set up your your giant ink thing and all that stuff. It was great fun. Uh, it was not just us. Uh, Janine Scribbles was there. Janine we know from the Netherlands. Uh, she's on Instagram as Janine Scribbles. She has a blog. She has fantastic handwriting. And for me it was wonderful to see her again because she's a fellow Dutchie. She's from the Netherlands. So it was a lot of fun to, to say hi to her. She had flown in all the way from uh, uh, Rotterdam to, uh, to be at the show, uh, which, which was great. So I really enjoyed saying hi to her. She helped out the Andersons. Uh, Mike Matteson of Ink Dependence, a uh, blogger, was there. Uh, he helped them out. Um, and uh, uh, Steph was there to help them. So I, it was a lot of people setting up their table. And I have to say a lot of respect to the Andersons for driving all the way from, in this case, Wisconsin. So this is not one of the ultra far shows for them. But even so, they're driving with all this stuff. Brian and I made two trips after their initial trip to get all the stuff out of their car. We set it all up. It was great fun. It was great fun. It's, it's pretty stressful because, of course, you want to be as quick as you can to set everything up so that you can start to get in customers and, and start to retail, start to talk to people. So it was a little stressful, but in a way also a lot of fun. So I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I then went to Mike Masayama, uh, Nibmeister Extraordinaire, uh, put my name on their list, that's, that's how they work, so if you want to get a nib worked on or tuned by by Mike, uh, you, you talk to his charming wife and you, you write down your name and phone number and whenever they have a, when your slot is up, they call you. Um, I wasn't there that late, but I was already number 18 on the list, I think, and we, we didn't make it that day. Uh, which just goes to show how, how immensely popular he is, because five years ago you could put your name in his list and two or three hours later it was your turn. So his popularity seems to have skyrocketed, and rightly so. I'll, uh, I'll come back to that. So that was the next thing I did. Time for a little sip here. I was wearing a special suit. Uh, if you want photographic evidence you can find that on, uh, on Instagram and Facebook and such. Uh, but a lot of people, I, I kind of stood out, but a lot of people came up to me, said hi. Every single person, super, super nice. And I may have mixed up some days because some people I ran into in other days, but uh, so many nice people. Again, I, I, I can't mention you all, but uh, Tom, uh, fantastic guy. He had a, an, an English last name, but is actually Dutch. Uh, I'm not going to mention last names here, just because I'm not sure if people want that, but Tom, super nice guy, Stuart with his fantastic bow tie, I, I, I really enjoy talking to you, uh, met him I think two days in a row, fantastic guy, um, so many nice people, uh, one thing that was great uh, was meeting uh, Bill, Bill is a guy that Aziza and I have been corresponding with for years, and this was the first time we got to actually meet uh, and super nice. He brought us a, a bunch of teas, uh, which are fantastic. My lovely assistant hands them to me. It's just a white box, but I mean, there's, there's tea in it. Bill, I can tell you, I've already had the, um, I forgot what the, uh, what the official name was. It was something with monks. Monks Meditation. Superb. I opened this box. It smells delicious. So thank, thank you so much for the gift. I, I, I really appreciate it and it was, it was fantastic to meet you. So a whole bunch of people, I, I, I'm not talking three or four, dozens of people all dropped in to say hi to me, and it was great. And I, um, I really appreciate it. And the reason I appreciate it is that, especially if you've been following me for a while, you know that um, not everyone is equally nice online. And sometimes that's hard. But 
everyone I met in DC was so incredibly kind, sweet, encouraging. People uh, confirmed that they, they love my videos, our videos, Aziza's too, Aziza's work, Aziza's blog. Um, and it's, it's heartwarming. I really, I really mean that. It's, it's great to interact with you all and it, it's, it's really motivating to continue doing this. Because if you hear from so many people that what you're doing is enjoyed, that it, it, it adds something to their lives that may sound a bit grand, but that it ha it's so important to them, it's, it's, it's really great and an honor and a privilege. So, just wanted to say that. I just drink away my tears here. But I, I really appreciate that. So, thank you. Okay, now, then I went to Ryan Krusak. And I kind of ushered Aziza in there. Ryan Krusak of Krusak Studios, you may know of him. He makes beautiful pens. Um, really, really nice stuff. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of types of wood. He makes pens that are not kit pens. He has way, way moved beyond that, uh, which is fantastic. And the thing is, I had contacted him a couple of months ago, and I, I proposed some sort of project to him. I um, Again, if you've been following my videos for a while, you know that Aziza and I had a cat. Uh, the cat appeared in some of the videos just because she, she didn't care and she would be in front of the camera like this. Um, and the cat passed away, which is, I think, almost two years ago now, but she is still sorely missed. As you know, if you've ever had a pet, some pets are, are, are really special and are, are really tough to, to move beyond when they, when they pass. So I asked... Ryan, knowing that he's a great artist, if he could make a pen with the cat on it. So, he said, sure can. Um, it was a surprise for Aziza, so I sort of signaled to Ryan, like, we're coming in, we're coming in. And he put it out. And I think it was actually Mike Matheson who, who saw it and said, oh, there's a cat. And he gave it to Aziza. And of course, when she saw it, she was extremely uh, happy. So, here we have the pen. Now, I'm not even going to attempt to, to capture this. Uh, I just have some white paper here on, on camera. But that's the cat, which he uh, hand-painted on, uh, on the pen. It's one of their Legend 14 models. And it's stunning. The, the, the portrait, seriously, is amazing. What I have here is uh, Aziza's phone. So we have the cat, we have the phone. Um, that's the picture he worked from. It's it's really nice. The artistry is amazing. So I I was super happy with how this turned out. He even found some labradorite. I think it was labradorite, but I, I to match her eyes to put on the top and bottom of the pen. And I I think it's it's superb. So this pen will be reviewed in in due time. Um, but. Of course, the, the, the wonderful thing of this is not just that it is a very nice pen, but that it has the cat on it. So if, if ever you want to have a portrait, pet portrait or whatever, uh, to have your, your pet eternalized, Ryan is definitely an interesting guy to check out. And not just that, but I met him five years ago too. He's a super nice guy, um, incredibly warm and, and, and pleasant. Uh, uh, so. It was, it was a lot of fun to meet him again. Now, there were some other people I, I met. Um, some people uh, whose, whose names uh, are, are pretty well known in the pen world. Uh, for example, I met the, the wonderful uh, Father, Kyle, uh, uh, Father Kyle, who's a, a colonel for God uh, on um, uh, Instagram. Uh, also a blogger, and he... Um, uh, I've known him for a while, too, online. Uh, I think I may actually have sold him a pen at some point, when I think about it. And he's a wonderful guy, has a, a great sense of humor, is a lot of fun to, to hang out with. He was helping out the, the Vaness uh, people, who I also met for the first time. And uh, 
great, great guy. I, I, I absolutely love hanging out with him. As I said, has a great sense of humor, which, which is very important to me and people. Uh, was a lot of fun. So it was great to meet him. Um, uh, uh, Anna Reinert was also there. Uh, she was helping out uh, Vaness. Uh, her blog is also really interesting. Uh, so it was a lot of fun to, to, to meet all these people. Uh, also, uh, for the first time ever, I met Brad Dowdy there, the pen addict. Uh, also a lot of fun, very nice guy. He was there with his knock uh, company uh, for their pen pouches and such. Great guy. So it's it, it really is a lot of fun and it's it's always very interesting to see people in real life, people that you know online. You know what they look like, but in real life they're they're either much taller than you thought or shorter or whatever. But it's it's always fun. It's always fun to, to match up the 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 pictures or the, the videos that you've seen to real life and, and 3D because suddenly people look different and you hear what they actually sound like, etc. So a lot of fun. Um, two more people that I wanted to mention. I met Jeff Powers uh, of the Powers Pen Company who is an amazing guy, super generous, really, really nice. Uh, he um, is a pen restorer, is kind of being mentored by the inimitable Sarge I mentioned uh, before, uh, and um, Jeff is great. He's great at restoration pen, uh, restoring pens, pen restoration. So, if you ever have pens you would like to have restored, check him out. Uh, the Powers Pen Company. He is an amazing guy, and I, I really enjoyed. It. I sat down at his table. We just chatted for a bit, and he is he's incredibly kind. Um, Another guy I met, Dave from uh, Figboot on Pens, also a pen reviewer here on YouTube. Uh, a lot of fun to, to chat with him and uh, you know exchange uh, some experiences. Um, it's always uh, really nice. So a lot went on just on, on, on Friday. Then I went to, it was a big ballroom and then there was sort of a corridor surrounding it and there, was, uh, there were tables set up outside there, so I kind of walked out the ballroom. The first table I saw was the table of uh, Andreas Lambru of uh, uh, Classic Pens, or uh, I think Lambru Pens now, the uh, the makers of the superb Classic Pens. Uh, they're not cheap, but they are really nice. Uh, if, if you've seen some of my videos, you know I absolutely love my, my LB5. The thing was, I had to sign something there. I pulled out that pen and he said, Ah, I like that pen! So, a nice sense of humor. Really sweet guy. Uh, his employee Monica was there too. I, I was able to hold the new LB6. I was sorely tempted. Beautiful pen, large pen, fantastic material. Pens made by Paul Rossi, who makes really nice pens. So it was great fun. And that's another nice thing of a pen show. You can see pictures of a prototype online, but it's a whole different thing to actually look at them and hold them in your hands. You get a much better sense of the pen, so that was, it was great to, uh, to check that out. Now, going around the corner there was um, the Edison Pen Company, Brian and Andrea Gray. Uh, they are fantastic. Uh, I, I have known them for years. Uh, both of them I interacted with pretty extensively five years ago. It was great to see them again. They are incredibly, incredibly nice people. Fantastic customer service. They make wonderful pens. And Brian uh, lent me the new Menlo with the draw filler, um, which uh, is a, uh, a, a new filling system they've been uh, working on uh, and that I, I, I really, really, I find really interesting. Um, and he uh, not just uh, is the, uh, the, the the pen very pretty, but it's this currently is the only clear demonstrator with that filling system. So it's it's special pen. Um, of course, this will be reviewed as soon as I can, uh, and I I think it's very interesting. So draw filler, nice new filling system, uh, which which I really enjoy a lot. So that's coming up. And I have to say, I um, I love Brian and, and uh, Andrea. They're super nice people. So it was it was great to uh, to to chat with them. Very very warm people. After that, I um, have to admit that 
I was pretty dead. Uh, full day walking, it's, uh, you start at 9, we pretty much start at 8.30 to help the Anderson set up. You, you have all the chaos of helping to, to set up their table, which was fun, but you know, it's all the stuff. Then walking around the show floor, talking to so many nice people, looking at, trying to look at pens, and uh, um, you're pretty wiped at the end of the day, which was about, I think, 5, 5.30 or so. So, uh, a lot of impressions. Quick dinner, off to bed, and pretty much pass out. And there was Saturday. Saturday, traditionally the uh, busiest day, uh, because it's the first public day, right? The, the Thursday and Friday are, are trader days. Big ballroom, full of people, everyone is set up. The audience comes in uh, at uh, about, well, I think it was about 8.30, the show opens at 9, about 8.30 people already lining up in the lobby of the hotel to get in, um, and about... I don't know, five to nine when I was walking to the um, to the ballroom. It was a long line of people. Um, it's it's a it's the biggest show in the world. A lot of people want to attend. I don't know to what extent the the show was affected by um, um, the new venue this year, but it was definitely crowded. Saturday is a big day. Lots and lots of people come in. So uh, that was that was definitely a, a full day. I met many more nice people, um, again I, I can't mention you all, uh, what I would like to mention is I met Lenore and uh, Jack uh, who were really really nice, uh, Lenore is uh, in a wheelchair and uh, Lenore described herself as my smallest fan, which she was, super nice people, she, uh, she said that her and her partner actually don't watch TV, they just watch Series Nivage. Um, <laughs> that was great. And there were so many nice people. There was another uh, kind friend. I'm going to say Christ, I'm going to pronounce it the Greek way. But he, he gave me this FBI drinking coin. So I, I, I try to convince people that I am an honorary honorary member of the FBI now. I don't know how well that will work, but I'll, I'll see if I can uh, somehow put this in a wallet or something. Um, that was awesome. And this kind of stuff is, is really a lot of fun. So, it was not just them. I mean, there were, again, many more people I had either already run in the, the day before or that I ran in that day, ran into that day. Um, Ralph, his friend, um, so many people. Again, I, I, I just can't mention you all because this video is already absurdly long. But again, I, I enjoyed meeting each and every one of you. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for saying hi. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're trying to look at pens, but I, I, I'm, I'm really honored that, that you, you wanted to say hi to me. And I appreciate your kind words, of each and every one of you. Um, so I ran to Mike Matheson again, we talked for a bit, uh, I, I had the absolute pleasure at this show of meeting Kerry Yeager who is um, responsible for Fountain Pen Day, uh, check him out if you don't know what that is, it's uh, a day every year, uh, check him out on Instagram or Facebook. Um, Kerry is a super nice guy, really sweet guy uh, and I think what he's doing with Fountain Pen Day is fantastic, with all the merchandise he puts out, but also the whole concept, all the effort that goes into organizing something like that, having all the social media for that, all that stuff, it really takes a lot of time. So I think he's a he's a great guy. It was it was great to meet him because Carrie I've known for a long time too, but only online. So it's really nice if you can just uh, hug a person. Then uh, there was. Uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Brian Goulet. You know, you you may have heard of him. I um, uh, I ran into him at the uh, at the show floor. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, Brian Goulet was pretty much the reason I I started doing fountain pen videos in the first place. So it's it's always great to uh, to, to to meet him. I mean, when I say it's always great, I've met him twice in my life. But I mean, it's it's always a pleasure. It's always fun to to chat and. Uh, of course, he is extremely busy at shows too because everybody wants to. Uh, 
was going to say pound on him. That's not the right word, but wants to, you know, wants to, wants to get in, wants to say hi, wants to get a picture taken, all that stuff. Um, but it's it's always great, and I, I appreciate that both him and Rachel um, that they do this and expose themselves to this because it's 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 a lot of people uh, coming up to you. But you know, it is fun. But it's also a bit tiring when you have to talk to so many people. Not not because you don't want to, but just because it is. You know, you have to be on, you have to be chatting. But it's great. It's always great, and it, it was a lot of fun to to say hi to him again. Uh, so that was great. Uh, then I I also at that outside ring of the big ballroom I met the highly entertaining and really nice guy Pierre Miller. Pierre Miller is the uh, founder of the Desiderata pen company. Uh, they what he does is he makes he he, he makes pens with uh, ebonite feeds, but you can put a, a dip nib, a zebra G nib in it. The nib will wear out, but you can replace it easily and. Um, uh, they are really flexible pens, and a lot of people use them. I have used sort of a, a, a beta version a couple of years ago, um, and now I think he has pretty much nailed it. So he has really pretty pens, uh, and they are super flex, which is what people want. And you can easily replace the nib. You get way more flex out of that than you would get out of a flex nib, a modern flex nib at least. Just because they are dip nibs, right? Dip nibs on fountain pens, so that works. Pierre is an imposing person. Um, we uh, there's a picture on his Instagram uh, feed of us um, doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, and if you think these are fairly large hands, I uh, I felt highly inadequate uh, next to him because he's he's a he's sort of like an NBA player. He's 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 a massive man, um, and I super nice though. I really enjoyed interacting, talking about all sorts of things. A uh, great sense of humor, and I, I really appreciate it. Aziza got a pen from him. Now, I'm a little bit... I'm, I'm just going to show you this. Don't get all excited. I am going to chat with him about reviewing this. Thing being, uh, some of his pens are kind of one of a kind, and, and this is one of them. So don't, don't rush to his website now to purchase this, because there may only be one. I'm sorry. All I can tell you is it writes well. Um, and this is just just to give you a very quick impression. This is what those those zebra G nibs look like. So Ziza bought this, and I you know she's she's really into flex. So that that was that was great fun. Um, that was that was really really nice. Uh, then uh, we um, we finally got to say hi to Mike Masayama, uh, which I was very excited about. I um, Mike is a nibmeister. Who knows his cookies? The man is a, a miracle. Um, I uh, I brought a pen that I love, Opera Master, Visconti. I have a, a an old 18 karat broad nib, but I've always had a lot of issues with that nib. It's not even palladium, and yet it, it skips, it, it hard starts, it was, it was horrid. So I gave it to him and I, um, I said, yeah, it, it doesn't write. Yes, that was to be expected because it's a Visconti, and he it, it made him laugh, and he said, "Well, the alignment is completely out of whack." So I thought he's going to bend it with his thumbnail, and then we're good. But he actually spent, I think, about ten or twelve minutes or so on on this nib, taking it out, bending it, heating up the feed, setting that, uh, bending some more, checking it out. This pen is now magnificent. Where the nib was pretty horrible before, it is now perfection. It never hard starts. I've been playing with it all day yesterday. It doesn't skip. It, it starts straight away. The man is a miracle. So that was a lot of fun. Um, Aziza had her uh, M1000, Pelican M1000, with a triple broad nib that she wanted to converse, uh, convert into a, uh, an italic. Uh, that's exactly what he did. I, uh, I'll try to. Sh uh, you, she will definitely show that off on her Instagram feed. I'm, I'm sure. It's fantastic. Great line variation. Works perfectly well, and it's it's superb. I I really I I have praised Mr. Masayama's work before on podcasts and all that, but it's amazing to see just to see him work. He knows exactly what he's doing, and you end up with a nib that is perfect. 
And bear in mind, my Visconti, the nib tuning, it cost $30, but it has gone from a pen that was not pleasant to use because it didn't write well, to a pen that is perfect and that I will now use pretty much every day. So that kind of investment is worth it. So factor that in, especially if you buy an expensive pen and the nib isn't exactly what you like, you're disappointed, don't forget that there is such a thing as a nib mice. And there are others, and they have waiting lists, and it's a bit of a hassle, but especially the pen show, if you can, do it. Okay, I think that kind of concludes the uh, Saturday. We then had a dinner with uh, Scott Franklin of uh, Franklin Christoph. Uh, the whole Franklin Christoph crew uh, came along, uh, um, such a, uh, uh, Jim Rouse was also there, who does their nib uh, tuning, and uh, is basically their resident nib meister, who went to an Irish pub. Uh, it was great fun. It, it, Scott Franklin is a hilarious guy, has a, has a magnificent sense of humor. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun and um, I, I had a great time and I really, to me it really felt like the, the, the old days of, of Fountain Pen Geeks with a lot of, a lot of banter, a lot of, a lot of jokes, a lot of fun. It was, it was great. I, um, it's also the one event where pretty much as we sat down a round of water was brought in and purely by accident the the, the waitress the, the 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 tray lost balance a full cup of water was poured down Scott's neck so pretty much all night he was he was he was soaking and I absolutely love that when it time for dessert came he he asked to look if we could you know he asked if we could have a look at the desserts and then he said or does that mean you're gonna throw a pie in my face and it, it was just it, it was superb perfect so he gave me not just me but others too but I appreciate that uh, he gave me this cute little pouch within the Franklin Christoph wallet, which I actually think is really nice. It's, uh, it's a leather, has a zipper for, for coins or what have you, and a couple of card slots. Uh, very nice, I appreciate it. And the next day, uh, Sunday morning, Aziza purchased uh, two pens from him. This, of course, is a clear Aziza pen. It's uh, very much her with uh, uh, the, 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 the colors and um, uh, a nice uh, nib too. And also this beautiful Model 66. I love the Model 66, but this is a really pretty finish. And she had that nib ground into a needle point, which is not really my thing, but it is a thing for her dad. And, you know, one has to bring gifts sometimes. Um, I think that concludes the, uh, the um, uh, Saturday. So it was, again, back off to bed, completely wiped. And Sunday was already the last day. Now you think a four day pen show, that's a lot of time, but trust me, time flies. And before you know it, your the show is over. We didn't want to stay the full day on Sunday. We had to drive all the way back to Toronto. So we actually left around 11.30 in the morning, uh, said farewell to everyone. Uh, I mean, everyone, Anderson, the Greys, uh, Sarge, um, Pierre, I mean, all, all the, everyone, all super nice people. So, had a, a quick final round. I still were a couple of new people coming in, uh, saying hi to me. If you came in later on Sunday, you were looking forward to meet me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry it didn't work out that we already left, but, you know, there's always a next time. Um, that was great. It's, it's sad, it's sad to leave because these shows are intense, they're highly social events and uh, that's, uh, that, that was uh, pretty much it. Now, uh, you may have noticed that I haven't really shown you any pens that I bought. There were a couple that, that Aziza bought, I, I had one nib worked on and I, I, I lent this to review. Um, but that's pretty much it. And I, uh, it, it, was, it was difficult. Uh, for me and I, I try to figure that out because I I saw a lot of pens but I wondered how how have I not bought anything uh, kind of weird um, and it even upset me a little bit because I thought how can I be at a pen show and not buy anything but you know I think that the here we get to the moral of the story people Pen shows are very much about social interaction. Pen shows are about meeting like-minded people, meeting people that are great fun to be with, like Jack from Scotland, 
um, you know, so many fun, great people that I met. And at the end of the day, of course a pen show is about the pens, but maybe it's even more so about a social interaction. And I know this is a, a cliché thing, but the epitaph of collect memories, not things, really applied there for me. It was a great show, it was fantastic to meet so many wonderful people. I don't really need another pen. But some nice memories are always welcome. So, and sentimental mode. Uh, final thing we did was we, uh, we drove out, we had lunch somewhere in Georgetown. Some superb sushi, I have to admit. Uh, and then we um, we drove to the National Air and Space Museum, uh, which is uh, a, a Smithsonian. Uh, it's not in Washington D.C. proper. It's more outside. It's a giant sort of hangar, like a plane hangar, with all kinds of, of old planes, new planes, and also very very. I found that one of the most fascinating things, uh, an old space shuttle, and uh, that 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 really I found that really impressive. It's it's way way bigger than I imagined it was um, and it was it was great to uh, to you know to, to see that so I'm, I'm glad we did that and then we started the long drive back and we uh, we stopped somewhere in the middle of the night at McDonald's just like we had done the first day um, because you have to we arrived at McDonald's literally five minutes before they closed down on Sunday night um, McDonald's that time of night is very interesting. On the way back, on the on the way there, we saw a guy who had like a giant, sort of like a, a bear mask. Uh, that was something like I don't know, two a.m. or something. And there was a girl in a, a unicorn onesie. I mean, you see things at McDonald's at night that you you don't really see anywhere else. So that was that was very fascinating. And then it was the final stretch after that, and we arrived at three a.m. Uh, we had left at 6 p.m., so we made good time, but it was a long journey, and every mile was worth it. So, uh, this was just me rambling away for a very long time about the pen show. I hope I haven't bored anyone to death. I just wanted to try and convey what a pen show is about. If ever you have the opportunity to go to any pen show, it doesn't have to be DC, any pen show, there's a show every month in the US, somewhere, uh, other parts of the world, can be a little bit more difficult. The, the Netherlands, for example, has one pen show in September. Um, but if you are ever able to attend a pen show, do it. Do it. Great opportunity to check out a lot of pens, to learn about pens, because trust me, many of the vintage vendors, some of them are a little crabby, but most of them are really, really nice and are very, very helpful, are very willing to teach you, to show you things, to help you out. Um, uh, Joel Hamilton and his sister, for example, are, are fantastic vintage sellers who are always willing to, to help you out, to teach stuff, to, and if you're looking for something they don't have, they will bring you to someone else who does, and that's a great experience. So it's, that's really, really nice, and it's highly, highly recommended. Okay, so there you have it. DC Fountain Pen Super Show Recap 2017. Again, thanks to everyone I've met, everyone who said hi, I really appreciate it. I hope this was at least a little bit entertaining slash informative, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.